testing, testing, one, two, three. I have two fans in my room blowing at me because it is 80 degrees in here and it's fucking hot. Just checked it out, it looks fine. So, hi, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while. I know I'm not on here much. Thank you for your patience. I very much appreciate it. I just, I kind of do this stuff when I want to. It's not, I'm not gonna treat this as a job. I'm doing this as because I want to. So I'm just putting that out there, you know? I'm not gonna have a, you know, tight schedule of uploading. I'm just gonna do it when I feel like I wanna share something with you guys. That's it. And this video is something that I've actually gotten recently, which is, um, questions about practicing when you're in the broom closet. For those of you who don't know, being in the broom closet, basically, it's kind of like when you're gay but you haven't come out yet. You know, you're in the closet. So, the broom closet is when you want to practice witchcraft or you are practicing witchcraft, but you haven't announced that because you don't think your parents are going to be supportive or, you know, things like, hello! Say hello to the, the world. Doing a YouTube video. YouTube, oh. <laughs> for those of you who are in the broom closet, this is for you. There's a few things I want to go over. Um, a lot of it will have to do with basics, mainly about like protective stuff or, I mean, who knows, maybe even hints of like glamour magic can even be put into here. Um, and I'm going to start off with something that I have been experimenting with recently, which is plants. I really like having plants now. This is Henrietta, also known as Henry. When I got her, she was like this big. She has grown so much and I am so proud of her. So my dad got this for me and I use her as a warding plant. So she gets rid of bad energies. So I've actually posted about this on my Instagram account. I have an Instagram account now. You should follow it. I actually take good care of her. Um, but as I've said, I have posted on my Instagram about, you know, using plants in your practice. The reason why this helps people in the broom closet is because people will just think you really like gardening, which, I mean, it's good. The thing that I really like so far about plants and using this in your magic in practice is that it gives you so much, like, benefits, not only, like, spiritually, but mentally and physically, because it helps. Fun fact, having plants helps with, you know, air quality. Gee, I didn't know that. Dumbass. But um, it helps with irritated eyes and runny noses. So if you have a bunch of plants, you'll find that you won't really have any of that unless you're allergic. Something that you can do with these plants is after getting them, what you can do is draw like a sigil either at the side or at the bottom right here. And the sigil can be whatever your intention is for whatever this is. Ow, jeez. So for example, if you want a plant to be, you're gonna bring harmony into my room. Just do the sigil, bringing harmony into my space. I have a YouTube video about how to make sigils, so go watch that if you don't know how to do that. And so, like I said, you can write it on here, you can write it down here, it depends on, you know, what you wanna do. You can do little designs that can make you feel like they are sigils, because just watch my sigil video, I explain more about that on there. Mentally, this also really helps you because it gives you a sense of purpose and responsibility. Because sometimes, you know, with us people who have such severe depression or anxiety, like me, I recently got uh, diagnosed with a major depressive disorder. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but, um, using these plants, or having plants, I only have one, whom I'm not an expert, but with having plants, it kind of gives me a sense of self-care in a way. It feels like I'm taking care of myself and I'm putting all of this energy into the plant and it just feel, it feels nice because it feels like you're actually getting something done and it's so like, it gives you this sense of like little quiet peace inside of you. Not to mention, plants are living things. They can hear you. I'm pretty sure there's like actual studies based on like, positive or negative affirmations in growing plants. 
I'm pretty sure, someone look it up for me and confirm this for me if that's true, but plants are living things. They're, they, this is alive. This, these have cells in their bodies just like me, except, you know, plant cells, animal cells are different. That's a science class, but you can talk to this thing if you want to. Sure, people will think you're kind of weird, but I mean, they just don't understand. <laughs> the second thing, this is for people who want to do smoke cleansing, but you know, maybe they have severe allergies to incense or incense is seen as something negative in the household for whatever reason that it is. Or, you know, you just don't, it's just too much for you. Here's, here, here is my fabulous, amazing substitute for that that also doesn't give off any witchcraft vibes. Steam. So you have your cup of tea and there's some fresh, you know, steam coming out of it and whatever the tea is, like, you know, for example, raspberry hibiscus tea. Say you have raspberry hibiscus tea and, you know, you got the steam going, boom. You are now cleansing your room with protection and love and, you know, you're promoting love in your space because you have raspberry hibiscus tea. Same thing can go for chamomile um, or green tea, you know, there you go. Now you got some anti-anxiety cleansing. So what I would do often, I actually made a video about this a long time ago, back when I was like first starting TikTok, which never again, um, I would open the window and I would put the cup at the window. So when the air would blow in, it would blow the steam out. So you can do that or, you know, you can just wander around and just kind of, <laughs> Steam is a really effective way of cleansing if you can't do incense, and like I said, it doesn't give off any vibes. The other thing about practicing while being in the broom closet is um, candles. Because with candles, there's a fine line between you like candles or you're clearly doing rituals. So it really depends on like how you do that. Like, I mean, I use Bath and Body Works candles a lot. I don't really use like the full on tapered candles with the carvings and all of that stuff. It really depends on what candles you get and how you're using it. So you can have, you know, Bath and Body Works candle from that, you know, winter sale that you got on Black Friday. You know, same thing with the plants. You can write the sigil on the candle. You can carve it into the candle if you want. You can put it at the bottom of the candle, all your choice. And if you're, able to sneak some of it in i mean like sprinkle a little bit of something something in it i mean it again all up to you that's the beauty about practice you know you kind of do what you see fit you do what feels right for you and the other thing that i was talking about glamour magic recently i'm gonna sneeze <coughs> excuse me back to what i was saying so with glamour magic what you can do, same thing. You can put like little like signs or symbols down here that can represent, you know, beauty or um, popping of the eyes. You know, you can have eyeshadow and just use that. You can draw sigils on your face that have to do with beauty. See, clearly I need to do that. Look at this. What What is this? This is this, I, same thing with sigils. You can draw the sigils on your face if you're applying um, concealer or moisturizer or you know some, some, something like that to be like my skin is always glowing or I am ultimate beauty <laughs> something like that you know whatever you see fit so the thing with crystals is it's the same situation with candles I mean there's a fine line between I am really interested in geology or you are clearly a crystal girl <laughs> Um, so it really depends. Something that I did when I went to England, which I did post about them. You should watch my England trip. So I actually got this, like, pretty sure it's, I think it's marble or maybe it's quartz. I don't know. I didn't really look into it. But if you could find things like this, you know, it has this little plant and it represents hope. I mean, boom, you have a worry stone, anti-anxiety. You can use this to, like, tell it your wishes or something like that. It's you can find so much that is around you and be resourceful. It's, that is something that I enjoy so much about practice. I can find anything in here and use it for something. I can pick out anything on my bed right now and I can use this for something. Like, okay, this is on my bed. This is eyeshadow. 
So say this eyeshadow expires and I, you know, or it's completely empty. This has a mirror in it. Boom. You know what I can do with this? I can, if someone has wronged me or has, you know, made some terrible decisions or treated me horribly, put their name in here. Boom. Now they have to reflect on their choices in life. Boom. I mean, see that there's an example or, um, this notebook, um, this doesn't necessarily magic, but I mean, you can use this to write your sigils or something that I personally do for mental health purposes is every beautiful thing I find, I write it down. So these are all like beautiful things I have found in life. So I haven't gotten that far. So, I mean, stuffed animals. I have so many stuffed animals. Um, stick a rock or crystal inside or a sigil inside you know, sew it back up, boom. You got you got a protective stuffed animal or some animal that you can talk to. You have so much around you that you can use. So why not take that to your advantage and use it? Believe it or not, you are more creative than you think you are. Don't think otherwise. In terms of uh, grimoires or a book of shadows, it really depends on if, you know, parents or people tend to look through your things um, and in that case, I'm not sure if I can be much help. I did find out that my mom actually looked through my journal once in eighth grade. I was upset, but that's past. That's, that was a long story. Um, so I mean, you can have a regular journal. You can make it look like it's a regular journal, but really it's not a regular journal. Um, some people use Google Docs or I'm pretty sure if everyone's able to go incognito mode on, you know, their uh, browser or whatever go on incognito mode and then there you go you know no one can find your shit I think that's how it works I don't know how that works overall you have so many things in front of you that you can use to your advantage and so many ways to be secretive or stay in the broom closet until you feel like you are ready to say something and know that in terms of saying something if you practice or want to practice or if you want to be open about it that is entirely up to you nobody can force you whether or not you say you practice right now i'm doing a silent practice that's what i called it with my friends where i'm not sharing with anybody what i do like specifically what i do i don't show them um you know spells that i do or specific things that i have done or like any of that I'm not gonna be sharing my altar. I'm not gonna show anything on there. I'm not gonna express everything I do like how I did before when I was on the app that shall not be named. This also goes for people who are suspecting that somebody is like practicing witchcraft. And if that's the case, you know, don't, don't force them to say anything. Let them do that in their own time. It's their practice, it's their privacy. And if they are being private about it, then there's a reason behind it. So just keep that in mind. Well, uh, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you eventually. Bye-bye.